I'd like to ask the Holy Spirit to rest upon your heart and minds in this homily to give you a word, and I ask that you pray this blessing upon me too, and just do the spoken blessing today. May the Holy Spirit be upon you. Thank you very much. So in our, you know, we, whether we're real aware of it or not, we are here this morning because God's love has drawn us here. You know, whether you come every Sunday or whether by chance you're visiting and maybe you haven't been to church in a while, something like that, it's okay. The Lord, you know, he, he loves us and he draws us to himself. And the second reading is the, the, this apocalypse, it's from the book of Revelation and John gets this vision into heaven and he, he sees that all oh, thousands, tens of thousands of angels and you know, the saints worshiping around the throne of God and that's what the mass is. If you come to this side of the altar, you'll see the lamb. It, looks, it says a lamb that looks like he was slain, but is, it was slain, but is now living. The lamb of God, that is Jesus. And at every mass, we are joined. This is pretty cool, you know. These kids, hey kids, every time, if you get this at a young age, you'll be in good shape. So every time you go to mass, you go to heaven. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, and if we, you know, if we could see Every time we come to church, we, we say a lot, something like this. I believe in the visible and the invisible, like the angels. If we could see the invisible right now, they, we'd see all the angels worshiping God. We'd see, in a little bit, when we hold up the Eucharist, we'd see Jesus Christ. So we are truly joined to the heavenly worship. John Paul II, I've probably worn this line out. Can you ever wear out the line, this line? The mass is heaven on earth. It really is. And that's why Father Coughlin had outside the door out there, this is the house of God. This is the gate to heaven. We really have a heavenly experience in here. And it's God who loves us and is drawing us to himself. Last night I was working on something um, for evangelization. Just these little business cards we're going to have in, in mass to give out to people, to invite them to our Wednesday evening prayer series. And it's, it's a great, we'll talk more about it in the future, but it's a great way to just invite somebody to encounter the Lord. It's, you know, it's a simple, beautiful, beautiful prayer session that'll happen every Wednesday at 7 p.m. with beautiful music, some preaching and prayer. And um, if people have been away, things like that, it's a perfect thing to invite them to. And on the front of the card, it just says, um, it doesn't matter where you've been. It only matters that you're loved. And... Sometimes there's a lot of, you know, things that need to be put in order in people's lives, but it it starts with love. God will work it all out. If we can just get into his love and encounter him, he's going to work, he's going to work it out. So at the mass, we're drawn into this great union with the Lord who, who loves us and is desiring this union to us. And then if you look at the apostles, this is what God wants for us, a vibrant relationship with Jesus. Why give up sin, you know? Why give up the sins in our lives, the things that we know that the Lord doesn't want us to do? All those thoughts, words, actions that go against God's love? Because it's not worth it. It's so much better to live in this warm embrace of God's love than to give in to sin. And it's, we've all in our, very, in our lives probably been freed from, from major things in the past. And maybe there's little things right now you're like, I just need to be more patient. I need to, maybe there's something big you've been wrestling with. Put it on the altar today. The Lord will take care of it. Maybe there's one person in your life you've just been, I am so uncharitable to Joey. You know what I mean? Put it on the altar and he'll, he'll heal it. So, three quick things. The Lord, in his love, he keeps drawing us into this amazing, amazing relationship with him. An eternal exchange where he's giving us his love and we're giving ours back. He gives his life for us and we give ours to him. And in all eternity in heaven, That's what we'll see and experience, this eternal exchange of love. We'll never get bored of seeing God in the beatific vision in a way that's inexhaustible. We'll be so in love with him and with everybody there as well. But now, even now, Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is among you and we must live as an Easter people. Jesus is risen. There's got to be a joy in my life. Uh, Something that's different that you can't get in the world that only Jesus gives. It's that joy of knowing our Savior. And then the third piece, we've got to share it with the world. He doesn't want this light under a basket. And so, the good Lord, every time we come to Mass, he's drawing us into this amazing relationship of love, this eternal exchange that takes place now, should give us joy, 
will last for all eternity, and we must share it with the world. Final thing, today in Heritage Hall, after this Mass, there is a table set up out there where they're running Discerning Your Gifts workshops. As disciples of Jesus, the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that every single one of us has been given what are called charisms. They're special gifts. It's like a superpower. It's a special gift from God to be used to build up God's kingdom. Here's an example. You might have a charism, a special free gift from God for encouragement. You can go into a situation, what that means is you can go into a situation where people are down and out and you start to counsel and encourage and it brings supernatural results. People feel better. They're truly lifted up. Or you might have a charism for healing. People have charisms for healing, actually putting a hand on somebody and praying for healing. Or even spiritual healing, your presence, listening to somebody, giving a few words might bring healing. You might have a charism for hospitality. We all do our best to open our house up to people and things like that. But when somebody has a charism of hospitality, it's like the kingdom of heaven is just breaking in when they host a gathering. Um, You might have a charism of administration, you know, um, teaching, prophecy, you know, being able to tell people that, you know, I I really think this is what's best for your future. You know, not that you're going to see these things like, I see you hitting a hole in one on the seventh hole. hole." No, it's, I really think this is what's going to be best for you. And it's wisdom given from the Lord. If we take the time to discover our charisms, and then find a way to use them. If you knew you had a charism for evangelization, you get involved in something with evangelization. When you find out what your charism is, what your charisms are, there's several, it's supernatural power. And then you plug those, you plug those in. I think of John LaCroix. He has a charism for teaching. When he teaches RCIA, the room gets lit up. It's, it's of God, the power that's flowing through. It's beautiful. So we're in this eternal exchange of love we got a mission on this earth to share his amazing love with others. And he's given you these special gifts, these charisms. I want to really encourage you. There's, you know, out in this hall after mass to just go to the table. It's Via Maria Consulting and talk to him and, and just see. You know, there's a Wednesday day session during the middle of the day for those who might be retired. We want to make it accessible for everybody. And there's a Thursday night session as well. And it runs five weeks. You won't regret it. Discovering my charisms has really helped me in my priesthood. So... We're on this journey, friends, on a journey to heaven. He loves you. That's why you're here. He's given you special gifts. Let's receive the Eucharist today. Be open to using all of our gifts for God's glory. And we are going to be headed joyfully for the kingdom of heaven.